after spending way too much time researching these running backs for our draft guide, I actually had to update my rankings. Now, no, it's not going to be a completely different list than what you saw two months ago. It's not like all of a sudden we're throwing Brees Hall at number one overall. But we are making changes inside the tiers where maybe a few players in this list are going to rise a tier. They're going to fall a tier. But primarily, it's like, oh, okay, he went from running back 28 to running back 24. And I'm going to try my best to explain why we are making these updates and why we are making these changes. Starting off tier one by himself, Christian McCaffrey, not too much to discuss. I will say very transparently, if you are in a regular redraft league where you're just drafting with your high school buddies, your college buddies, where you only start two running backs, two receivers, and a flex, for the love of God, just take Christian McCaffrey and pick one. Don't even think about it. He has upside to break fantasy football. If you are in an underdog tournament in particular, I, I am considering CD Lamb at one. Just given the fact that in underdog, I find it very easy to find running back values later on. We'll talk about those running backs in this rankings list. Whereas I find it very difficult to find wide receiver values in the double digit rounds. But looking at CMC, especially in an underdog tournament where it's like best ball main is a $25 buy in $15 million prize pool where you are just chasing the highest ceiling possible. Nobody has a higher ceiling than McCaffrey. I mean, this is a running back that averaged 25 points per game last season. I mean, if you look at his projections, if you look at his underdog season-long pick currently, they're projecting him out to have like a touchdown per game. They're projecting him out to have like 100 total yards per game. Clearly, he crushed 100 total yards per game last year at a pretty much 120. My hesitation with McCaffrey would be roster construction, maybe typically wanting to go wide receiver in round one in these underdog drafts, and age. He is going to be 28 years old this next season. If we go through and look at the road of his screen or look at all running backs at 27 years old since the year 2000 to post similar seasons as Christian McCaffrey, you had names like Lamont Jordan, Eddie James, Edgar and James, Tiki Barber, Jamal Charles, Brian Westbrook. I mean, all these guys were out there averaging more than 20 points per game in their age 27 season. And every single guy minus Brian Westbrook got worse to significantly worse in their age 28 year. 28, it is one of those age drop-offs that we're seeing historically for the running back position. But obviously, Christian McCaffrey is built different. And that's why we know he's out number one overall in the running back rankings. It just comes down to, do you take him or C.D. Lamb at the 101? Now, dropping down to our next guy. This is an update we have. I made an entire video about this titled, You're Drafting the Wrong Running Back, Diving in Depth with Breeze First Bijan. Long story short, there are catalysts to boost both of these running backs from where they were last year. In the case of Brees Hall, the catalyst to boost him are going to be is another year removed from the torn ACL. We know typically that's when you want to be going in on these guys. We can project out his offensive line to be improved from where it was a year ago based off the investments the Jets made this offseason. And he is getting the boosted efficiency of the overall offense going from Zach Wilson to Aaron Rodgers. In the case of Bijan Robinson, the primary changes that he is going to see and what will make him better than he was last year is the change with the coaching staff. Arthur Smith is no longer there. Hopefully we see a little less Tyler Algier, a little bit more Bijan plus no Cordell Patterson. And also you're going from Desmond Ritter slash Taylor Heineke to Kirk Cousins. So you have the coaching change and the quarterback change at Atlanta. You have the offensive line improvements. You have the quarterback change and you have the health for Brees. So I think both running backs have massive catalysts for them to be much better this year than they were a year ago. But Brees Hall was already much, much better than B. John Robinson a year ago. So uh, looking at the catalyst, looking at what we had from them last season, I'm going to go with Brees over Bijan. And that is a pick that you can consistently make where Bijan does have a higher ADP than Brees in these underdog drafts. And then we're going to look at Jameer Gibbs. Now, what's very interesting is Vegas Sportsbooks just put out current lines and spreads for pretty much every NFL game this season. And people were able to go through and they were able to pull the implied team totals for every single week and be able to pull up what Vegas sportsbooks, who know more than you, who know more than me, who know more than anybody else you're watching on YouTube, I promise you that. They are projecting out the Detroit Lions to be a top three offense of the NFL in total point score. Now, whether you think that's a little too aggressive, whether you think that's perfect, it, it doesn't matter. This is going to be an elite offense. Jameer Gibbs is going to have Everything as the receiving back here. Jameer Gibbs is running behind an elite offensive line. And Jameer Gibbs saw a significant boost with his overall market share numbers for the Detroit Lions in their red zone at the end of last season. Now, if you think Mason, David Montgomery is going to get everything here in the red zone, you should not be drafting Jameer Gibbs in round one with where he's going. If you think Jameer Gibbs is going to see the red zone usage that he had at the end of last season, or possibly even a little bit more, 
the Jameer Gibbs, especially in a PPR format, is a no-brainer pick in the first round. Now, going over to our next tier, it's going to be Taylor and Barkley. Now, with Jonathan Taylor and Saquon Barkley, both are very interesting in that. Obviously, both have been disappointing over the past few years. With Jonathan Taylor and Saquon Barkley, both these running backs are going to be dealing with Russian quarterbacks in the form of Anthony Richardson and Jalen Hurts. So you are potentially going to see two main factors for these guys. One, we know with the Russian quarterback, we're typically going to see a lower check down rate to the RB because when the pocket collapses, that quarterback, like Phillip Rivers, he had no other option but to dump it down to Austin Eckler, right? Drew Brees at the end of his career had no other option but to check it down to Alvin Kamara. However, when the pocket collapses on someone like Jalen Hurts, when the pocket collapses on someone like Lamar Jackson, Anthony Richardson, they can tuck in a run if they need to. They don't have to check it down to the running back out of the backfield. We've talked about this for years and years and years. So the check down rate is going to be lower than expected for these Russian quarterbacks. We're also going to see those Russian quarterbacks, especially guys that are big like Anthony Richardson and Jalen Hurts, vulture rushing touchdowns at the goal line. Now, the factor which I'm going to be giving the edge to Taylor over Barkley, one, Taylor's the younger running back. Actually, we'll go, we'll go a couple. One, Taylor's the younger running back. Two, Taylor's game isn't as built as being that receiver that Saquon Barkley is. And while we want to project Anthony Richardson to have a massive share of the rushing touchdowns in Indianapolis, it's not a guarantee like we've seen with Jalen Hurts. With Jalen Hurts, we, we know they have the tush push. We, we know that the rushing touchdowns will be there. So I, I'm going to give Taylor the slight edge over Barkley, but obviously both are in the same tier. Now going down to our next tier, Kyron Williams has been falling like a rock. Now, I, I'm in France right now, so sadly I cannot draft on underdog. You know I'll be drafting on underdog every single day when I get back to Texas. We'll be doing that on the live streams. Can't wait for it. But whenever I left, Kyron went from being a running back that was going at the end of round two now to a running back that we're getting at the end of round three. And while I never really drafted round two Kyron Williams, I will draft a ton of round three Kyron Williams. So running back that I whiffed on last year, I, I didn't think he was going to do anything close to what he did. I didn't even think it was possible, to be honest with you. I, I wish I knew. But anyway, we go and look at it. 21 points per game, 95 rushing yards per game, 17 receiving yards per game. I mean, if we go through and look at the range of outcomes that we are seeing for Kyron Williams, in particular at 23 years old going into this next season, you have guys like Chris Johnson, Jamal Lewis, Adrian Peterson, LaShawn McCoy, David Montgomery, Matt Forte, Najee Harris, Doug Martin. Yes, you have a couple bums on this list like Najee, but you have a ton of absolute studs. The concern is going to be the injury that he suffered this month, which is why he's falling. And obviously this team going out there and selecting Blake Corum where they did. Now, the thing with Devon Achan, is Achan was just as good last, and he wasn't just as good. He was very, very good, right? But he was doing it based off of efficiency, not necessarily volume. Kyron was doing it off of volume, 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 which we know is stickier from a year-to-year -year perspective. And also with Devon Achan, similar to Blake Corum, they go out there and they add Jalen Wright. So I, I, I'm going to go with Kyron Williams over Devon Achan. Unless we get more news about this injury and all of a sudden it's a bigger deal than people were expecting, then I think you do have to drop him down a bit. But, of course, if you want to draft with me when we are back in Texas, I can't wait for it. I'll be drafting on Underdog every single day. You can find the live stream on this channel. If you want to join a draft, you can find that link in the comment section in the description. And yeah, if you use code FLOCK when you sign up to Underdog, you're going to get a 50% deposit bonus up to $250. Plus, if you use code FLOCK, you're going to get my 2024 Fantasy Football Rankings, my 2024 Fantasy Football Draft Guide, and get hooked up with a special pick -em. So make sure you take advantage. Find that link in the description. But going down to our next tier, we're going to be looking at Travis Etienne, Josh Jacobs, Isaiah Pacheco, and Derek Henry. With ETN, this is a running back that is still in that age prime. We can say the same thing with Isaiah Pacheco. Josh Jacobs, while he was drafted in 2019, was 20 years old coming out of Alabama. So, I mean, he's still incredibly young as well. And in the case of ET, in case of every single one of these running backs, I think that they will be in good offenses. Now, I, I understand, yes, uh, Jacksonville was very bad at the end of last season. Personally, I think that's more due to what we saw with Trevor Lawrence playing through an injury that he probably should have just shut down his year. He probably should have just sat out. I personally am projecting the Jacksonville Jaguars be a much better offense this year than what we saw a year ago. If we're looking at Josh Jacobs, he has been a massive faller in underdog drafts. If you go back to when Best Ball Mania just dropped, he was going at the beginning of round three, which I, I was never really taking him there. But now you're getting Josh Jacobs at the beginning of round five. And at that price, given the fact that you are looking at a potential three-down running back for one of the best offenses in the NFL, 
I, I'm very happy to go out there and draft him. With Isaiah Pacheco, so running back that you actually saw a boosted target share last season in comparison to what you had his rookie year. Also, obviously, a phenomenal offense. Great quarterback play. Vegas has this projected to be a top five offense in the NFL this season. To nobody's surprise. And last but not least, we have Derrick Henry. Derrick Henry, I, I, I don't know. I, I'm just hesitant. Like, let's go through and let's pull up the expected range of outcomes that we have here for Henry. He's going into his age 30 season. If we look at running backs that had a similar age 29 season to Derrick Henry, Ward Dunn, on, uh, Antoine Smith, I don't even know how to say his name, Stephen Jackson, Frank Gore, Justin Forsett, James Stewart, Rashad Jennings, Edgar and James. Every single one of these guys, and, and I mean every single one of them, was worse in their age 30 season than they were in their age 29 season. What we have seen 90% of the time is a running back is going to be worse at 30 than they were at 29. Yes, Derrick Henry's situation improves, but Lamar may steal rushing touchdowns. I think it's a great NFL fit. I just don't necessarily know how we project him out for fantasy. Now, dropping down to our next tier, we are going to go with three year three running backs that I, I, I don't know. All have red flags, all have positives. You have James Cook, Rashad White, Kenneth Walker. Now, in the case of Kenneth Walker, I think he is the most talented running back in this group. But you have the issue that Zach Charbonnet is there. So Charbonnet is there. He's going to have the receiving down role. And it's not like we can project out Kenneth Walker to be a three-down guy. In the case of James Cook, they add in Ray Davis. You also have Josh Allen stealing rushing touchdowns there. So you don't know if they add in Ray Davis because, I mean, James Cook has been very inefficient in the red zone. Possibly that red zone rolls up for grabs. But the reason I'm going to have James Cook at the top of this list is just because it should be the best offense. So we want players in good offenses. Rashad White in the mix here. Uh, the issue with Rashad White is if you look at his efficiency numbers last season, he was one of the worst running backs that you had in the NFL seeing that much volume. Now, the thing is, you can't completely fade him because, I don't know, this is a running back that they don't add anybody. I, they had a day three running back in the NFL draft I, as in a nothing burger for just running back depth. So while he's very inefficient with the volume he had last year, he's probably going to get the volume again unless you really want to be drafting Bucky Irving. And then the last guy in this list, Joe Mixon, declining running back on his second team. The Bengals were willing to get rid of him for Zach Moss. The thing is, even if we've seen the efficiency drop off, you're going to be in a phenomenal offense here with C.J. Stroud, and it's not like Damian Pierce showed absolutely anything this past season. So even though Mixon is older, I'm fine going through and drafting him. Now we're next here. We're going to go Kamar at 17. I am making these rankings for a happy PR format. Underdog's happy PR. I, I'm drafting on underdog right now. That's where I'm going to be drafting for the next few months. I'm assuming that's where you're drafting right now. So, yeah, that's what we're making these rankings for. If you're playing in a full BBR format, you can move Kamara up a bit. But this should be a very bad Saints offense. It's not like they do anything to dramatically improve it. You still have Derek Carr there, the check down princess. Uh, we saw who Kamara is last year. He's going to be another year older. He's about to be uh, playing in his age 29 season. So, I, I, I don't know. Best case scenario is you're going out there and you're just – seeing nine targets a game and a ridiculous target share for Kamara in this offense. Um, Stevenson, and my concern here is if you look at Vegas sports books, right now the New England Patriots are projected out to be a bottom three offense in the NFL. Hey, Stevenson's not like he is a full-blown feature down back with a guaranteed starting job. I mean, we have no idea what the workload's going to look like here with no Belichick. Um, going over to Aaron Jones, so an older running back that his team was completely fine getting rid of, and at the same time, He's going to an offense that's significantly worse than the one he was just in in Green Bay. And then looking at David Montgomery, uh, with Montgomery, he's not going to have anything in the receiving game. He's in a very good offense, but I'm worried that Jameer Gibbs is going to take the red zone role. If you think Montgomery is going to be the goal line back, sure, take Montgomery at the top of this tier. Just personally, I don't know. I, I'm very worried that this is like Mark Ingram, prime Alvin Kamara, right? where you're going to get a ton of volume from David Montgomery, but it's going to be carries between the 20s that don't equal fantasy points. Now, dropping down to our next tier, I'm going to go Jonathan Brooks at 21. Now, this Brooks ranking is very dependent on the tournament that you are in. It's very dependent on the draft year. If you are drafting with your regular high school buddies and you have a shallow bench and you have to submit your starting lineup, no, you should not draft a running back in a bad offense coming off a torn ACL in this range. No, do not do it. This is specifically for underdog tournaments where everybody, they all focus in on week 16, week 17 matchups. Obviously, those are important depending on the tournament that you are in. But what's also very important is trying to take players that have elite ceilings for weeks 15, 16, 17, the fantasy football playoff tournament. If you look at Jonathan Brooks, the prospect model, if he tested, he would have been a great athlete. 
He has the size to be a three-down player. He was used as a receiver at Texas. He gets the NFL draft capital. He has a clear path to be the starting running back here. I'm taking a ton of Jonathan Brooks in this range. Specifically in underdog tournaments, we're trying to like turn $25 on a $1.5 million, right? Um, and Najee Harris is our next guy. I think if it was just like a regular fantasy football league, go Najee over Jonathan Brooks. The issue is what's the real ceiling with Najee Harris? If you look at what we've had over the past three years just with a consistent decline, uh, plus this is an offense that doesn't project out to be too good. Not not a ton of upside in my mind. We can almost say the same thing about Tony Pollard, uh, DeAndre Swift. I don't think they're too interesting to talk about. I think Zamir White is someone that's interesting to talk about because I, I know Zamir White has had a ton of hype. My thing is, if we go and look at Vegas Sportsbooks, right now the Raiders are projected out to be one of the worst offenses in the NFL. And if we are looking at Zamir White, yes, Josh Jacobs was there, and we can use that as an excuse for why White hasn't done anything. It's a very valid excuse. But ultimately, this is still a running back that was a day three draft pick, pretty old, and has not done anything going into year three. The amount of times in fantasy football that people have bought into this story of the guy with uh, no draft capital that rides the bench for years and years and years and the starter ahead of him leaves and they project him out to take that starting role. It, it never happened. Like, uh, please let me know when this works out. Maybe if it was a phenomenal offense where he's stepping in and this is like the chief situation. Yes, uh, I'm all in because we have touchdown upside there. The issue with Zamir White is he's on a bottom five projected offense. So even if you do hit and Zamir White is the full-blown starting running back, Zamir White is getting 15 touches a game. I, I think he is capped with his touchdown upside, and I don't think he's a similar talent to what you have with someone like Jonathan Brooks. Now our next guy, Jalen Warren, uh, similar story to Najee. It's an offense problem. These guys should split. The thing is, if Najee were to go down, Jalen Warren probably turns into a league winner. If Jalen Warren were to go down, Najee probably turns in a league winner. I, so I think they're reasonable at their price. But Javante, Zach Moss. Zach Moss is someone that I want to talk about. I need to look into more because right now the Bengals are projected out to be a phenomenal offense this season, both by Vegas Sportsbooks and also just anybody that wants to bet on a Joe Burrow bounce back, which I think is the vast majority of fantasy football drafters. So if you are looking at Zach Moss here, he does appear to be the clear-cut starting running back. What's very interesting is if you go and look at the Chase Brown usage last season, Chase Brown didn't see anything as a receiver. It didn't see anything on third down. So if you think that Chase Brown's not going to be the third down back this season, and you think that usage is going to go to Zach Moss, I think that our ranking of Zach Moss here is probably too low. I think you can make a strong argument to have Zach Moss at the very top of this tier. And I would love to hear your opinion down there in the comment section because if Moss is going to get the receiving role in an elite offense, has the size to be the goal line back as well, and plus in the games that you had no Jonathan Taylor last year, Zach Moss was a consistent top five RB. I think you can make a strong argument to have him at the top. Um, now our next year, we're going to go James, Connor, Trey Benson back to back. Now, it is very interesting to talk about what you'd be drafting these guys for. Obviously, James Conner will have a higher median projection this season. If you are drafting, say, in the marathon on underdog, where it doesn't matter for weeks 15, 16, 17, those points are worth just as much as points in weeks 1, 2, and 3. There, take James Conner. James Conner is going to be the starting running back to open up the season. Unless he gets an injury, we are most likely going to see Conner be the lead back through the entire season or at least the majority of the year. So I think James Conner in that style of tournament on underdog is the pick. I think if you're in a league with just your high school buddies, you should probably go through and you should probably take James Conner over Trey Benson and get those points at the beginning of the season. Now, if you're in Best Ball Mania, if you are in an underdog style contest where you are trying to backfill those points for weeks 15, 16, 17, there you most likely have a higher ceiling with Trey Benson. So it's interesting. The offense should be okay in Arizona. I, I think so much is up in the air with the coaching staff change, plus with ho hopefully Kyler being much better at 100% health. It's just very difficult to know right now. Um, Brian Robinson will be our next guy at 31. So with Brian Robinson, it's a more natural fit with Jane Daniels. We're going back to what we were talking about previously with these quarterbacks that are going to run the ball. 
They will have a lower check down rate overall, but the overall offensive efficiency, particularly for these rushing guys, it should go up. Brian Robinson's not a running back that relies on seeing those checkdowns. Brian Robinson's a running back that is majority driven through first and second down. So you want to kind of say the Austin Eckler addition doesn't really impact him. It maybe caps his overall upside if Gibson's gone and then Eckler just steps in to fill the Antonio Gibson role or the J.D. McKissick role, whatever you think that is. And it should be a bad offense. But I, I do think we probably have to have Brian Robinson here at one, at least in a happy PBR format. Full PBR may be a little bit different. Um, Singletary here at 32. Should be the starting running back. I don't think he's great in this. Should project out to be a bottom three offense in the NFL, at least according to what Vegas sportsbooks are telling us currently. Austin Eckler is going to be our next guy at 33. We have talked consistently about the Austin Eckler red flags and why everybody and their mom hates Austin Eckler, and it makes sense. It's the cool thing to hate Austin Eckler. Nobody likes him. I don't, I don't think I've seen a single person step up and say, no, I'm the Austin Eckler guy. I haven't seen it. We'll just run through it one more time. Austin Eckler last year looked like he was a complete dust ball. I, I mean, the man couldn't break off a long run. If he did see open the open field, a defender would catch him from the behind because, I mean, the man just could not hit his top speed or has no top speed left. Plus, this is a running back that has had his bread and butter as a receiver. You have Jaden Daniels, who most likely is not going to have a high checkdown rate. You have Jaden Daniels, who's most likely going to steal rushing touchdowns. You have Brian Robinson, who may be the goal line back. So you have an old, dusty running back that may be out of juice, where it's a not a natural fit with the quarterback, where he's in a committee, and why I can't go in, why I can't be the guy to raise my hand and go, no, I, I'm going to be the Austin Eckler guy this year. Why I can't do it? is because he hit free agency and nobody wanted to pay him. You look at the Austin Eckler contract versus the Devin Singletary contract, Austin Eckler paid pennies, pennies on the dollar compared to these other RBs. So seeing what NFL teams went out there and said, yeah, uh, buddy, you're not worth it, that also concerns me. So everybody hates Eckler. That's why he's not getting drafted inside the top 32. And honestly, if you're using these rankings, you're probably going to come away with Eckler because from what I've seen, Eckler continues to fall and fall and fall down these underdog drafts and is going now behind guys like Roman Wilson at points. Uh, now, Nick Chubb will be the next guy that if you are in a, a league with your college buddies, do not be uh, drafting Nick Chubb. Okay. It's a running back that at the beginning of the year is probably not going to be giving you anything. It's going to be a wasted roster spot. When he is in, you're not going to be able to start him. You don't know if you're going to be able to trust him until he gets up to full speed. So, yeah, if you're just in a regular league where we're trying to score points weeks one, two, and three, and that's our main focus right now, I, I wouldn't really bother with Chubb. If you're in the marathon on underdog, for the love of God, do not be drafting Chubb in that tournament. Points in weeks one, two, and three matter just as much as points in the final three weeks. The thing with Chubb is they don't bring anybody outside of Deontay Foreman. So maybe, just maybe, that means that this team, this team that has more information about this Nick Chubb injury than I do, than you do, than really anybody drafting does, they looked at him and went, yeah, he'll, he'll be here this year. He'll, he'll play this year. They don't go draft anybody aggressive. We'll roll into the season with Jerome Ford and Deonta Foreman, and then we'll get Chubb back. So it, that, plus with how cheap Nick Chubb is in these drafts where he can get up as an RB4, particularly in underdog tournaments where we are highly incentivized to chase ceilings for weeks 15, 16, 17, I have found myself drafting Nick Chubb. Good news, bad news with his injuries. One, obviously, we all saw the destroyed knee. It was a primetime game. Every single person then their mom saw it. It was in week two. So you want to say, oh, okay, well, by the start of the season, it's going to be 12 months removed. But since it was the destroyed knee, he didn't repair the torn ACL, I believe, until November. So... It is a tough scene. Don't expect anything early on. Understand if you are drafting him, it's for like the final the fantasy football playoff stretch. But yeah, it kind of depends on the league if it, that's worth it to you or not. And then our last two guys will be Raheem Mostert and Gus Edwards. Now, with Raheem Mostert and Gus Edwards, obviously Mostert was a league winner last year. He's going to be 33 years old this season. They add in Jalen Wright. They have Devon H. With Gus Edwards, I don't know. Every year. I, I fade Gus Edwards. It's always worked out, except this past season. He's going to an offense that I believe has an elite quarterback. 
that should have a great coaching staff that has invested in their offensive line and wants to run the ball, and he has no competition. So I'm going to rank him here, and I'm going to let you know I am stupid. You probably should not listen to these rankings on Gus Edwards. You should probably draft him higher than this for, for whatever reason. I don't know if in another life Gus Edwards um, stole my girlfriend from me or something. But I, I just personally, I've never been able to draft him, and I, I probably need to get over it. I don't know why. But I think that's it for this video. If you enjoyed it, please hit the like, subscribe, and yeah, I'm going to be drafting the second I get back to Texas on Underdog every single day. And if you want to hop in a draft with me, they're best ball, so there's no time commitment at all during the year. It's how I won 150000 on Underdog two years ago. So I draft hundreds of teams there every single offseason. And, yeah, you can find that link in the description, comment section. Code Flock will get hooked up with a 50% deposit bonus up to $250 on a new account. Plus, it's going to get you our 2024 rankings, our 2024 draft guide, and it's available in damn near every state. But thank you again. Really do appreciate you. Really hope you have a great day. And hope we get to see you out with the live stream sometime soon.